I want to talk to you this morning about expecting and creating an atmosphere for a miracle. Amen. How many came in here this morning needing a miracle? You came in then this morning asking God, Lord, I need your provision over this situation. How many am I talking to this morning? Praise the Lord. It's about three quarters of the church. So as we can see is that no matter what we do as believers, no matter what we, no matter what we think about, no matter where we go, we know that God is faithful to us. Amen. And when we talk about creating this atmosphere, it's an atmosphere where it needs the presence of God. You need the presence of God. Here we go. Come on, Holy Spirit. There it is. We need the presence of God, and we need the arena of faith. Amen. Say, we need His presence, and we need faith. We need those two operating together so that it creates a dynamic inside of us a dynamic in the atmosphere that we're walking around because the Word of God says that you are already blessed. So therefore, the Word of God has already went forth and it said that you were already blessed. Say, I am blessed. I have received my blessing. Amen. So as you can see, the Word of God says that you were already blessed. But we are not walking in this blessing. We are not walking in the realm that the Lord has provided for us. Because Jesus already spoke it over our lives. He already declared and said, you're blessed. The Bible says that when the word goes forth, guess what happens? It's already a done deal. You are blessed. But too many times, a lot of us are not, oh, there it is. Oh, thank you, Lord. Woo, praise you, Jesus. Woo, thank you, Lord. Amen. Sometimes when you get a gusher, you get a gusher. Amen. Praise the Lord. Aaron, you know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. But <laughs> Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord. Woo, glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Got that joy again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But when we're talking about this arena of faith and in the presence of the Lord God, I want you guys to see something. It's about what you decide to clothe yourself with. Now, let me give you an example. This morning, I woke up and I had my I had my 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 jacket inside of the closet. Amen. You know I've been working out. You can see that, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I decided this morning that I was going to wear this jacket. Remember, you determine what you're going to put on. It has to come in your heart. You determine what the Lord is going to do for you. You say what goes. And too many times, we decide to put on something that does not belong to us. Now, I may have put on another jacket and it might have felt pretty tight or it was short for me or maybe it didn't even belong to me. And too many times, Christians, we are putting on things that don't belong to us. We say, you know what? Oh, Lord, that headache, my headache came back. Oh, Lord, you know what? I'm starting to feel that. I get some, getting some pain in my lower back. Now, I'm not telling you to kind of look at that fact and say, oh, my back doesn't hurt. Sure, it hurts. But what I'm asking you to do is not to receive that. You don't, that doesn't belong to you. Amen. Who am I speaking to this morning? That doesn't belong to you. What God has said, he says, I have come that they may have life and they may have life in abundance. 
And when I say abundance, it's the a God type of life. In the life of God, there's nothing missing and there's nothing broken. You have complete wholeness. But too many times as us as Christians, what we do is we tend to look around and we say, you know what, I'm going to take this today. I can't ever get that promotion. I don't know what it is. They keep looking at me and they keep bypassing me. And I don't get that promotion. Or you know what, you're, you're in some type of job and, and you're ready for an increase and your increase doesn't come and you say, you know what, they never choose me. I want to ask you, what garment are you putting on? You know, I, I got this, you know, I got this trick knee. You know, it every, every now and then it tricks me and kind of creaks on me a little bit. So I got this, this creak knee, right? And you're kind of, you're, you're walking around kind of like Rick James and you're kind of like just hanging loose, right? And you say, you know what, I got this trick knee. Yeah, you got that trick knee because you're putting on that trick knee. You're declaring something with your words. And the Bible says that your words are powerful. Jesus says that you will be justified or you will be condemned by the words that come out of your mouth. Watch what you say. Your words will cause things to happen to you. If you keep saying, you know, it's around this Christmas season, it's around Christmas, and, you know, every time I come around Christmas this time, I always catch the flu. Hello? <laughs> you know, nobody in my family, you know, every time Christmas comes, nobody in my family loves me because every time I turn around, I get one gift, and that's from my mama. Hello? What are you speaking? What are you accepting? More importantly, what are you deciding to put on? Amen. Praise the Lord. I wanted to give you that, that quick analogy, that quick foundation. I'm a California boy, so I like it cold in here. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to go to the Word of God with me. I want to share this story for you, but I want you to, before we, we start, I want you to go to, to Mark chapter 10. We're going to go ahead and read out of Mark chapter 10 this morning. You know that the Lord will give you what you're asking for. Amen? He will give you what you're asking for. How many are there in Mark chapter 10? Okay, I'm not there yet. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I'm trying to break in this, uh, this, new, this Bible that I've had. My other one is falling apart. Amen. It's a good thing when the, when the minister's Bible is falling apart, that means he's actually using it. Praise the Lord. You know, I didn't have to go, <laughs> no. Amen. That too, and then my phone is about to die. Any minute. Anyway. But in Mark chapter 10, I want to talk to you about it, and it's going to about the story. It's about the story of blind Bartimaeus. Everybody's heard the story about blind Bartimaeus. Am I right? Pretty much, right? Show of hands. Blind Bartimaeus. Praise the Lord. Bartimaeus, I want you to understand. I'm going to point a couple things out, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and go through the text. Blind Bartimaeus, you've got to understand, Bartimaeus means son of the honorable one. Say that, son of the honorable one. Who is the honorable one? Well, the honorable one was that he was the son of Timaeus. Timaeus was the honorable one, but, Barnum, but Bartimaeus was the son of the honorable one. Are you with me? Now, in this, in this son, it, it talks about that blind Bartimaeus... And I want you to catch this, and here's the thing. The Holy Spirit is going to speak to you at the moment that he needs to. So I want you to use your faith 
And I want you to receive exactly what you came for here today. Because remember, it's not my job to give it to you. My job is only to be the messenger. That's it. Amen? Are we here? So if we look at this this morning, we say, in blind Bartimaeus, it says that blind Bartimaeus, not only was he blind, but he was a beggar. He was in bad shape. This boy was in, in terrible shape. To be blind, can't work to make money, but now I'm a beggar. Now I want you to understand is that we're, we're reading a physical story, but it has a spiritual context to it. Everything that the Bible, that it talks about, has a spiritual ramification that is inside of it, that if you would get a hold of the word, it'll change your life. Amen. If you can see it, it'll change your life. So I pray that the Lord give you spiritual revelation here this morning, that you receive what the Lord wants you to receive this morning, and once you receive it, you're going to say amen, and you're going to see your, your miracle that you came here for is going to come right into you. And you're going to receive that. Amen. Amen. Are we in agreement? Amen. So I want to make sure that we're in agreement that there is a level of faith that is inside this room today. That if anybody came needing a miracle, that, that the faith level is here because my faith is there. But I want to make sure your faith is there. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So we see blind Bartimaeus. Is, there's a couple things that happens in the story and it's very unique. I read this in, in a couple different Gospels, but I like the Gospel of Mark the best. I like this one. And it says that blind Bartimaeus himself, as he was walking, Jesus, he's a blind beggar, and what happens is Jesus is getting ready to depart from Jericho. Jesus had entered into Jericho, and now Jesus was departing from, from Jericho. I want to tell you this. God placed in my heart one time is this, is that Jesus loves to be pursued by his people. He loves to be pursued. I love to pursue God. When I see, when I see God show up and I sense his spirit, man, I want to jump right in. Why? Because he's there. He's not there, I don't want to be there, amen? But when he's moving, I want to be there. I want to jump in with two feet and two arms, amen? Praise the Lord. But it says that, has anybody got that Bible? Let me, let me go ahead and read a few scriptures. Praise the Lord. I got it right here. Amen. Let's go ahead and read in verse 46, okay? It says, Now they came to Jericho as he went out to Jericho with his disciples. And a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, he sat by the road and he was begging. Verse 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 48. Then many warned him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. I want you to notice in verse 49, it says, So Jesus stood still. Stop right there. Ooh, here we go. It says that Jesus stood still. So we understood that we have blind Bartimaeus. We understand that he's blind. He can't do nothing for himself. He's a beggar, so he, has, he can't work for anything. He depends on everybody to be able to help him. And if people did not help him, he would not be able to help himself. That's a tough situation to be in. But the Bible says that Jesus had entered into Jericho and now he's departing to Jericho and he is walking by. But blind Bartimaeus, it says that he heard. He heard. Somebody say he heard. He heard, he heard that Jesus was passing by. Who? Jesus of Nazareth was passing by and blind Bartimaeus, somehow he must have heard because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing. So when we hear faith, something inside our heart gets excited. And we start saying, okay, because that life of faith begins to grow. Begins to stir up in our spirits. Amen. And when blind Bartimaeus, 
He heard because somebody had been talking about Jesus and saying that this Jesus is passing by. And he says, I got either one or two things to do. I need to make a determination. If I call out to him, will people make fun of me? What will people say about me? Are you concerned about what people are saying about you when you call out to Jesus? Amen. But if I don't call out to this Savior, if I don't call out to this man who brings healing to me, if I don't call out to him, he'll just pass me on by. And I won't receive my miracle. So blind Bartimaeus, he got the revelation inside of him. He got the guts inside of him. He says, I do not want to remain the same. I don't want to remain a beggar. I don't want to remain a blind person. I know that I've heard that this Jesus, he is the one that heals, and I want to be healed by God. So guess what? I don't care what people are talking about me. I don't care what people say that I don't have. I want what I want, and so I'm going to call out to my Savior. And blind Bartimaeus, he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And right away, we get people that come and tell us to be quiet. What are you calling out to Jesus for? You already have what you have. Those are the cards that you've been dealt. You're going to end up being blind and a beggar for the rest of your life. Quiet. You're embarrassing us. He had to make a decision. He made a determination in his heart and he says, uh-uh. He said it again. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He did not allow somebody to tell him to be quiet. When you have a need, you need to be radical and go get it. Amen. And the Bible says that as Jesus was walking, going through, it says that when he heard it for the second time, see, Jesus hears faith. Don't just say it with your lips. Mean it, what you say with your heart. Amen? But he heard blind Bartimaeus and, and he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible says right there, Jesus stopped and stood still. I want to tell you right now, blind Bartimaeus got his attention. And when we cry out to God with our needs, if we would cry out in faith and not and not be concerned about what people are saying behind our backs and talking about us, but we know that this man, Jesus, we know that he is the one that can save us, he is the one that can heal us, he is the one that will take us from one degree of glory to the next. When you can get his attention, I'll tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he stopped right there in his tracks. He did not pass him by. Somebody reached him with faith. And Jesus said, bring him to me. Amen. When we call out to God with whatever need that we have, whatever that we're believing God for, if we call out to him, he is there to hear us. And he too stops. And he too hears us. And Jesus himself, he looked and he looks at blind Bartimaeus and blind Bartimaeus comes before him and Jesus already knew exactly that he was blind. Jesus already knew that he was a beggar. He already knew the circumstances that were going on with blind Bartimaeus. It didn't matter. Jesus is still approachable. Jesus is still that you can touch his heart if you would just use faith and you would just ask the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, I have this concern. The Bible says that he hears the prayers of the righteous. Are we crying out to him? Amen. 
I want you to notice this. Verse 49, let's pick that up again. So Jesus stood still and he commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man saying to him, be of good cheer. Rise, he is calling you. Verse 50. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and he came to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Blind Bartimaeus had accepted and received this blindness. He's a beggar. But notice that when Jesus had called him, and told him, they came and told him, be of good cheer, the master is calling you. He wants to speak with you. He had a decision. It says that he took on the garments that he had. He rose up, threw them to the side. I will not identify myself with that again. I will not allow that sickness, I will not allow that blind, I will not allow that poverty to identify me and tell me who I am because the master is calling me. The master is calling me to him. And it says that when he threw off his garment, no longer because his faith was that Jesus is calling me I'm going to stand before my Savior, and guess what? I know for a fact that he's going to hear my prayer. And no longer will I pick up that, that garment of being a blind person, being spiritually blind or being in spiritual poverty. I will no longer pick that up, but I have identified myself to Jesus Christ, and I'm going to go before him, and I know that he is going to heal me. And the robe that he gives me is going to be a robe, a garment that he places upon me of his glory over me. And I will not identify myself again to my lack, to my disease, but I will identify myself to who I am in his eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he walks up to Jesus. And Jesus, knowing all, knew his circumstance. He asked him, what is it that you want me to do for you? Thank you, Father. Church, the Lord Jesus is asking you this morning, what is it that you want him to do for you? He's asking you to let go of that garment that you've been holding on to. He's asking you to let go of those things that you have need of and put on his glory. Put on that garment of praise. Put on that garment of worship and enter into his presence. And blind Bartimaeus, he looks and he says to Jesus, what is it that you want me to do for you? He says, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus says, according to our faith, let it be so for you. Amen. He had to make a decision. It's like we have to make decisions too in our own lives. Because the Lord is passing by right now. I sense the presence of the Holy Spirit here right now. 
And the same word that holds true then is the same word that holds true today. What are you want Jesus to do for you? You have a loving God, a loving Savior, that if you needed healing in your body, say, Lord, I have cancer. Jesus says, what is it that you want me to do? Remove this cancer, Lord. So be it according to your faith. Lord, they've given me a bad report at the doctor. What do you want me to do? Lord, my marriage is breaking up and I, I can't seem to fix it. What do you want me to do? I can't seem to get a job. Everywhere I go, they're not hiring. What do you want me to do? My children are running around and they're on drugs and they're doing things they shouldn't be doing. What do you want me to do? He's asking us to speak to Him in faith so that we can receive our healing, so that we can receive our deliverance. And He will take away the garment of heaviness and He will put on a garment of His peace. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Will you go ahead and stand with me? Jesus said, go to the world and make disciples of all nations. I have a question for you today. Are you a disciple? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Has someone walked with you and taught you the foundations of Christianity? Have prayed you through, the, through whatever struggles you might have been going through in the past? I want to encourage you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I invite you to be part of our program. We have a new program that is designed to raise you up to be the great man or the great woman of God. I believe that God's anointing is upon this ministry and that the Lord will raise you up and you'll become great in the things of God. The anointing of God will come upon you. You'll see that God has a great plan and purpose for your life. So you don't have to struggle no more. We want to walk with you. We want to encourage you in the things of God. Come and be a, come a, become a disciple today. Call that number that's on the screen, 956-412-5600. Become a disciple. We're waiting for you. We want to walk with you in Jesus' name.